This is Ice Cream Gecko, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to disassemble your Logitech G815 keyboard. Now this is already disassembled, I know, but there are no clips holding the upper and the lower half together, so it's only a matter of screwing around to um, separate those two. There are three hidden screws on the bottom side of the keyboard. I will show you them and tell you how to get to them. Now the first screw I removed was this one. There's another one right here. There's another one right here. And there are these two ones that are under the sticker with your serial number and all that Logitech stuff written on it. I um, used a hairdryer to heat up the sticker and then I used a number 10 yeah, lovely, let's stick into that. I used a number 10 scalpel and uh, a little pair of needle nose tweezers to remove that uh, cautiously. And then again, I used the scalpel to um, remove this or, or cut out these little screws right here because the, the sticker appears to be like a two layer stick and this lower half, is a, it is quite sturdy. So you probably will not really get that off all that easily, at least not without um, ruining your chances of uh, putting it back on. This is another screw right here, and there's one hidden screw right here. Do not forget that. That's quite important. Another screw right here, and another screw right there. One more hidden screw, and it is at the center foot of the keyboard. Now, there are quite a few screws on top of the thing. Those are these smaller screws right there, quite a few of them. And what I did is I removed all the key tops, you just have to, they, they sit in right there and you pull it, well, like this, and you pull them out uh, with the force on the top and the bottom of the key. I used, uh, for the ones here in the middle, I um, tried to remove the top ones first and then get a ruler under the bottom of it and lift it up with my finger and the ruler simultaneously. In order not to break them, I think none of them have broken. These are the little clips that they are uh, hooking into the actual switch with. Now, the screws, quite a lot of them, and try not to forget any of those before trying to remove the bottom plate from the top, because um, that's going to introduce breakage. One is right here, one is right here, another one right there. This one is here as well. We've got here on the G keys another one, then there is another one right here, another one right there. Another one right here, and three on the key, on the, the number pad. Let's go through right here. Here is another one, and no one on this side. Next ones are the bottom ones, one right there, another one right here, one right here, one under the space bar, which you cannot see without removing all the keys. Another one right here, another one right here, and three right there. Now I really urge you to remove all the keys before that and uh, try not to open it without doing so and removing all the screws because I almost, I think, I, I think I almost broke it because some of those are really difficult to see while the key tops are still mounted to the device. Yeah, this um, irregular one. Now this is where this irregular screw sits. It is right here and fixes this cable stop in place. Uh, also try to not forget about that when the two halves are disconnected and you want to try to um, separate them. Now, something that I do not understand about this keyboard is that the top one right here, you, you know, if you've got this keyboard, that this is quite heavy. Now, the top half of this isn't heavy at all. It is just as heavy as a regular keyboard. Um, not much more to it. I mean, they use metal on the thing, but it is an air... Well, they say it's, I think, an aircraft-grade aluminum alloy. Now, that's quite light. Something that's weird about it is not this metal piece, but this metal piece. It is a large metal thingy that is uh, stuck down here, and there's a... What I, what I believe to be a non-conductive um, plastic sticker right here on top. The here is a cutout for the metal to touch, um, I guess this part right there, and there's another little thing right here that connects to this thing right there. I do not know what those connections are for, um, but I must say that I'm uh, 
that I'm surprised by it, because the only thing that's very heavy about this keyboard is actually the bottom half, and it is just plastic aside from this, and rather this very heavy piece of metal right at the bottom here. I do not know if this is um, functional, or if it's just there to, I guess, fake a feeling of, uh, of a solid, well-made keyboard, because at this moment in time, I believe that this is the only reason for that. I do not know what this does electronically. Just a lump of metal at the bottom of it to add some weight. I do not know. Another connection is, of course, here. This little one. It's, it's just a sponge with uh, some metal mesh wrapped around it that connects to this point right here. Again, I do not know what this is for. If you do know, please let me know in the comment section below, because otherwise I will, uh, if I know more about this and if this is useless, I will just remove this bottom part. You can feel that this is kind of riveted in uh, with plastic knobs. I will just remove this entire thing and make this a lighter keyboard because it's um, a bit difficult because it's, you know, quite smooth on the outside right here to actually move and lift around on the table, it often just drops. Now the only reason why I took this apart initially was that um, I'm not that happy with this keyboard. It is uh, quite expensive at a premium price of 150 euros and when I pick it up and like twist it a little bit and sometimes even when I just pick it up like that, it um, makes weird cracking noises as if something isn't quite right about it. I uh, tightened these screws on the back side of the keyboard um, once and then this, this particular noise went away but I didn't tighten down these ones right here, the noise reappeared. Maybe I have to tighten those of these ones as well. This one was properly tight, this one was a tiny bit loose, could have been on a bit tighter. Maybe that is the reason for this uh, weird behavior of this uh, way too expensive keyboard. but. I do not know for sure. Now at the end of the video I want to give you a few close-ups of individual uh, sections of the keyboard if you want to at some point switch out some parts or if something is broken like this this um, yeah, roller right here, the volume rocker. Now this one actually broke on my old G110 keyboard so I uh, at some point switch it out for this one but if you want to remove that I think it is possible it is plugged in right here. Now let's move over with the keyboard. And here is the LED for the G logo on top. Now, I hope this uh, video could help you out a little bit. Uh, I hope you learned something new and uh, if you want to disassemble your Logitech G815 for whatever reason, you can now do safely so. Again, do not lose screws and try to remove all of them before completely ripping your keyboard apart. Once all the screws are loose, it is a fairly easy job to remove the lower half from the top half. You basically just lift the top off. There is no particular force required to separate them at that stage. At last, be careful when you retighten the screws that you use the screws in the exact position where they have been before because some of those are different. This one right here under this one is different. This one is different than some others and this one is very different as well. 